Welcome to the unboxing and demo video of the WeGuard AquaSmart Open Well Submersible Pump. With dynamically balanced rotating parts, water lubricated bearings, an energy efficient water cooled motor, and wide voltage band operation, this pump is built for efficiency and durability, backed by an 18 month warranty. Inside the box, you'll find a user manual with detailed instructions, a box with accessories and other items, cable joining material, a bend for ensuring minimum submergence, a strainer to prevent the energy of foreign particles, and the open well monoblock pump set. Inside this box is the intelligent pump controller, also known as the smart panel box. Additional accessories include a float, dead weight, a PG gland, and a packet of screws. This pump features automatic on and off for ease of use, a scheduler and timer for automated operation, protection against dry run, voltage fluctuation, overload and stuck pump, an internal lock that tracks details of faults, a bypass switch for manual operations. Now let's wire the motor. Always use insulated tools and gloves. Follow the wiring diagram in the user manual carefully. Unscrew and open the intelligent pump controller. These are the red, yellow and blue or RYB cables from the motor. These are the RYB terminals to connect the wire from the motor. Connect the RYB cables to the corresponding terminals. These are the phase and neutral cables from the power supply. These are the terminals for the input supply. This is for phase and this is for neutral. Connect the corresponding wires from the input power supply and tighten it in place. Close the lid of the intelligent pump controller and tighten the screws. To use automatic turning on and off of the pump, we need to connect the overhead float switch. Refer to this wiring diagram for more information. Set a multimeter to continuity mode. Let the float switch hang down. Connect the two wires from the float switch to the multimeter leads. If the multimeter reading shows zero, it means there is continuity. These are the red, black, yellow and green wires for connecting sensors. Of these red and black wires are for the overhead float switch. Yellow and black for a sump tank float switch. Black is the common terminal. Connect the identified red and black wires of the overhead float switch to the intelligent pump controller. Properly insulate all cable joints. If you are not using a sump tank float switch, then trim and insulate the yellow and green wires. Lower the pump into the well. Please consider this container as an overhead tank. Drill a 15.5 mm hole on the top side of the tank, above the overflow level. Fit the PG gland into the hole. Fix the dead weight onto the float cable. And pull the cable through the PG gland. Adjust the cable length inside the tank based on the required minimum reserve water level. The tank should have at least 25% water as reserve. Position the float just above the 25% reserve level. Set the dead weight at about 65% of the total height. This will be the total height of the water level. Tighten the PG gland to lock the float switch in place. During the trial run, check if the tank overflows. If it does, lower the dead weight. If the tank is not filling adequately, raise the dead weight. Let us look at the various features available in the intelligent pump controller. It features four main buttons, the on or off and menu button. A short press of this button will turn the pump on or off, while a long press of five seconds will enter the menu options. Use the down button to navigate downwards in the menu or to decrease values. 
Similarly, use the up button to navigate upwards in the menu or to increase values. If no button is pressed for 20 seconds, the menu exits. The LED indicator on top also provides important feedback. The pump on indicator glows when the pump is on. It blinks when the pump is forcefully stopped. The dry run indicator blinks when a dry run fault is detected. The scheduler mode indicator glows when the pump is set to the schedule mode. It blinks when a schedule is running. The fault indicator blinks when any fault is detected. Here is a list of fault indications and their descriptions. Use this information to diagnose and address faults effectively. The float menu option allows enabling and disabling of the overhead float functionality. Press and hold the menu button for 5 seconds. When the menu option float is displayed, press the enter. Use the up or down buttons to navigate to the EN option. Press enter. The display shows done to confirm your selection. Now, when the overhead float switch is activated, the pump starts automatically. When the overhead tank is full, the pump turns off. To disable the float switch, as before, press menu and navigate to the float option. Use the up or down buttons till it shows DIS for disable. Press enter. The display shows done. Now the pump can be manually turned on using this button. The display indicates that the float is disabled. Press the on or off button again to stop the pump. The pump turns off. The normal mode enables the pump's normal operating mode. Open the menu and enter the not option. When EN is displayed, press enter. If normal mode is enabled, both scheduler and timer mode will be disabled. The schedule mode allows the automation of pump operations at specific times. Let us show you how to set schedule 1 for the morning. Open the menu and enter the SCH1 option. S on is the time when schedule 1 should start. When you press enter, the on time is displayed in a 24 hour format. Use the up or down to first adjust the hours. Then press enter and adjust the minutes. When you now press enter, you will be asked to set the time you want schedule 1 to end. Input the required time and press enter. Ian appears, indicating that you can enable schedule 1 if desired. You can see the disable option by scrolling up or down. Navigate to the EN option and press Enter to enable Schedule 1. The Schedule Indicator is now on, showing that a schedule is enabled. The Intelligent Pump Controller display also indicates that a schedule is enabled. To turn off the schedule, navigate to the Schedule option. Go through all the time settings and when EN appears, change it to DIS and then press Enter. The indicator turns off. Similarly, you can set schedule to, to run in the evening or any other time you prefer. Schedules work alongside float switch automation. Adjust it according to your specific water requirements. The hour or real time clock must be set for schedulers to function correctly. Open the menu and enter the hour option. The time is displayed in a 24-hour format. Use the up or down buttons to first adjust the hours. Press enter to adjust the minutes. Press enter and save the real-time clock. The beep settings allow customization of startup and pump on or off beep notifications. Press menu and navigate to the beep menu option. Select your preference and save it. The intelligent pump controller lets you adjust the dry run cutoff time. Press menu and navigate to CONF or configuration mode. Enter the DRY option. 
The default is 15 seconds. Set the cutoff time from 1 second to 12 minutes and save it. The fill menu option allows you to set the maximum single runtime for the pump, providing an additional layer of protection. Open the menu and enter the fill option. Two hours is the default maximum fill time. Adjust the desired maximum fill time from 1 minute to 24 hours. The timer mode allows the pump to operate for a specified duration without automation. Press menu and navigate to the TIMR option. It shows off, indicating the timer is currently not active. Select the duration you want the pump to work for, from 1 minute to 24 hours, and press enter. When active, the timer mode overrides other operational modes such as scheduler and float switch. To turn it off, enter the timer menu and reduce the time until it displays off. Press enter and the pump turns off. The fault log records the last five faults along with voltage and current readings. Open the menu and enter the log option. Press enter. Use the up button to cycle through the four slots. Each fault is identified by a code as shown here. Press the down button to view the voltage and current readings associated with the selected fault. Press enter to exit. The auto retry feature helps recover from faults without manual intervention, reducing downtime. For dry run protection, the intelligent pump controller attempts to restart the pump after 30 minutes up to 3 times. For other faults, the retry times is also set to 30 minutes but allows up to 5 retry attempts. If all retry attempts fail, manually reset the pump by turning off the main power supply for 2 seconds then switching it back on or press the enter button for 5 seconds. The intelligent pump controller can also help diagnose other issues. Low battery indicates that the real-time clock's battery has a low charge. Replace the battery with a 3V lithium CR2032 battery to resolve this issue. After you replace the battery, R to be displayed. Set the real-time clock to resolve this error. With its robust design and advanced features, the Wegard AquaSmart Open Well Submersible Pump has been built to provide reliable, noiseless performance for years. For more information, refer to the user manual or contact our authorized dealers and enjoy hassle-free water management with Wegard. Thank you for watching.